Wilson's disease, also known as hepatolenticular degeneration, is a rare genetic disorder of copper metabolism, characterized by excessive accumulation of copper in tissues, particularly the liver and the brain. In normal circumstances, copper is involved as a cofactor for many cellular processes, and is absorbed primarily via the enterocytes in the duodenum and proximal small intestine. It is then bound to albumin and travels through the portal system to the liver, where some is bound to ceruloplasmin, which is the main carrier of copper in the blood, and then travels around the body. We normally consume more copper than the body needs, and so the excess is secreted into the bile and subsequently lost in feces. A small amount is also lost through the kidneys. The copper is loaded onto apoceruloplasmin or exocytosed into bile by a metal P-type ATPase that is coded by the ATP7B gene found on chromosome 13. In Wilson's disease, mutations in the ATP7B gene lead to a lack of this protein or its activity leading to an inability to form ceruloplasmin and an inability to excrete copper in the bile, leading to copper accumulation. Eventually, the excess copper exceeds the liver's storage capacity and leaks into the circulation, leading to accumulation in other tissues like the brain and the cornea. Excess copper in these tissues causes increased oxidative stress and leads to tissue injury inflammation and death of the cells. In the liver, this can manifest as hepatitis and eventually cirrhosis, while in the brain, the basal ganglia are particularly sensitive, giving coordination and movement disorder. Due to its rarity and systemic nature, Wilson's disease can present with systemic and non-specific symptoms with a delay of around two years in diagnosis. The most common manifestations include hepatic presentations such as jaundice, hepatomegaly, coagulopathy, ascites, hemolysis, and even cirrhosis itself, and up to 20% present with acute liver failure. Neuropsychiatric presentations are also common, such as tremors, dystonia, dysphagia, rigidity, poor coordination, or gait abnormalities but remember that sensation is normal. Psychiatric disturbances can include personality change, depression, psychosis, and cognitive impairment. Neuropsychiatric symptoms most commonly manifest between the second and third decades of life. Kaiser Fleischer rings are golden brown rings around the cornea, coming from deposition of copper, a characteristic finding of Wilson's disease. Based on these, Wilson's disease may be classified based on the phenotype, with H1 and H2 being acute and chronic hepatic Wilson's disease, both of which require the absence of neuropsychiatric symptoms, and N1 and N2 are used for the presence of neuropsychiatric symptoms with and without liver disease, respectively. As we said, it's rare and is an autosomal recessive condition with prevalence of between 1 in 30 to 50,000 people. Over 700 ATP7B mutations have been identified so far. It affects males and females equally and tends to appear between 10 and 40 years, but can happen at any age. Bear in mind that not all individuals with genetic mutations will manifest symptoms. The diagnosis is multifactorial, combining clinical features and further investigations. These include laboratory tests like serum ceruloplasmin and 24-hour urinary copper. Ceruloplasmin levels below 50 mg per litre are strongly suggestive of Wilson's disease. More than 100 micrograms of urinary copper in 24 hours is also consistent with Wilson's disease. Additional lab investigations include liver function tests and a coagulation screen. Slit lamp examination is used to evaluate the presence of Kaiser Fleischer rings, seen in 95% of patients with neuropsychiatric presentations, and imaging studies can include liver ultrasound looking for evidence of cirrhosis, although this is not specific. 
and MRI of the brain can reveal the face of the giant panda sign that is characteristic, coming from high T2 signal intensity, coming from the tegmentum surrounding the red nucleus and substantia nigra. Liver biopsy may also be done. With above 250 micrograms of copper per gram of dry weight being consistent with Wilson's. Genetic testing may confirm the presence of mutations in the ATP7B gene, but generally only a few of the 700 mutations are tested, and so a negative result does not exclude Wilson's disease. Population screening is not currently available, but first degree relatives should be screened. A set of criteria exists called the Leipzig criteria that form a score to aid in the diagnosis. This includes two points for each of presence of Kaiser Fleischer rings, neuropsychiatric symptoms or suggestive MRI, as well as up to two additional points each based on urinary copper, serum ceruloplasmin, liver biopsy and genetic testing. A score of four or more is highly likely Wilson's, two to three is probable, while zero to one is unlikely. There is no cure for Wilson's disease currently. The aim of treatment is to reduce copper levels in the body, and left untreated it is fatal, typically by the age of 30. Initial therapy involves chelators such as D-penicillamine and triantine used to increase urinary copper excretion. Penicillamine is associated with a paradoxical worsening of neurological symptoms. Zinc salts are used to reduce the gastrointestinal absorption of copper and tend to be associated with fewer side effects. Dietary modifications include avoidance of high copper foods like nuts, shellfish, cocoa and organ meats, but this has been found to be more important in the initial phase and is recommended for the first year of treatment. After this initial therapy, the focus is then maintenance therapy, which can include lower doses of the chelators or zinc. Additionally, liver transplant may be considered, particularly in cases of acute liver failure or when medical therapy is ineffective. Chelation therapy is indicated also in asymptomatic patients and in pregnancy. However, typically with the minimal doses under specialist guidance due to the potential for teratogenicity.